Hello students, I am going to create a blackout poem, which we will be doing in class for our study of World War II and Anne Frank. This is a page from an Anne Frank book, which we, you will all be given a page. These books are falling apart, so we're gonna make some poetry out of them. And I just wanted to show you um, how I would do blackout poetry. There really is no right or wrong way to do it. It's just that you're using the words on the page that's all you can do as far as the words you can use have to be on the page. And besides that, you're going to black out the things that you don't want. And then you can also add um, illustrations and things if you'd like. Or you can make a design on the page, which I'll show you some other examples. I'm just not that fancy. So what I'm going to do is just first outline the words that stick out to me. Okay, uh, Betrayal does stick out to me because it's just a good word. Um, Anne thinks about her diary. Ooh, I love diaries. And I work all the time. Ooh, and look, I crossed out the S. That's going to be a problem. That's okay. Math. Math to me equals problems. <laughs> okay. Um, father sticks out to me because I miss my dad every day since he died. Office. I spend a lot of time in my office. Paperwork. Strangers. Straight to her desk. Ooh, I have a big desk that I'm at all the time. From his pocket, he draws a gun and points it at her. He orders her not to speak and not to move. She can tell at once that he's not a robber. He's a plainclothes police officer. Not to speak sticks out to me. The company manager, Mr. Kugler, hearing the unfamiliar voice sticks out to me, comes out of his office to investigate. The policeman tells him that someone just called the police station to report the Jews are hiding here. Hiding sticks out to me. He motions Mr. Kugler back inside his office and then follows him. The office door closes firmly behind them. Sorry, they're vacuuming out here because I'm here at 6 o'clock on Friday, but Mip desperately wants to warn Mr. Frank. Okay. So, I now have words that have stuck out to me, and I want to create poetry with these words, okay? Um, I can just, at this point, just cross everything else out and make it plain, or I can look and see if there's, like, a design that I've created that I could work with as far as to make some art. Like, it looks like I almost have a head here, if you notice, because then goes a nose. So, I'm just going to go with that. I don't know. Let's see what happens. I'm going to make a mouth, which I am not an artist at all. Um, but we'll just go there. My mouth is really bad. Maybe I can fix that with, <laughs> I don't know what, but. <laughs> okay. Um, so that to me looks like a big old brain and some hair. I don't know if I want to make women's hair or what I want to make here, but I'm just going to start with that. You guys, I am just making stuff up as I go. That is what blackout poetry is. And I feel like and what happens with blackout poetry, which is cool, is you always end up with some kind of theme that you didn't even realize you had inside of you. It's really cool. It's kind of like a, like a, I don't know, what is it? Astrology that it's like you have things that are uniquely yours that maybe you're not even aware of. Astrology is not the right word. Anyhow, this nose is also really big. Okay, so um, betrayal. Am I really feeling, let me, let's just look at these words now. Diary works, math problems, father, office, paperwork, stranger, desk, not to speak, hearing, unfamiliar voice, hiding, closes, desperate. Even just reading those words makes you start thinking of something, huh? So I'm going to keep betrayal and I'm going to keep that because to me that goes with my thoughts about my father. I feel betrayed that he's, he's gone. He died when he was 73. Okay. So betrayal and my father 
And work is something that my father and I greatly share together because he was a workaholic like I am. Okay. I don't know. Not Math is a problem for me, but not necessarily something my dad and I share. So at this point, I'm just going to cross math out. But I'm going to keep problems. Okay. Office paperwork. Those are things that my dad and I both share in common that we had to do throughout our lives. Okay. Um, stranger. My dad is a stranger to me now because he is gone and I don't know what he's like now or what, you know, in what state he is and where he is. And I'm thinking about that at my desk. Okay. Um, do, can I add more words that would maybe connect those together from what's already here? Stranger enters the building and walks straight to her desk. So I can write stranger and her desk. He orders her not to speak. Um... I want to do this. No and speak. I cannot speak. No, I cannot move. When I think about my dad and how much I miss him, that's how I feel. Okay. She can tell at once that he's not a robber. He's a plainclothes officer. Okay. So hearing, ooh, hearing unfamiliar voice. I'm going to say hearing voice like I am hearing my dad. And then I'm going to keep going there. Hiding closes firmly behind desperate. Someone is hiding. I don't have an is I can use, so I'm just going to say someone hiding. To me, that's my dad. He, I could just say he here because I have it to use, closes. He closes. He closes, he, we're going to have to go out of order here, the office door closes firmly behind, and then our last word is just going to be desperate, and that's describing me. I could even do wants if I wanted, but I don't want to. So now you can see that I'm going to cross out these other words that I already did because I don't need them because now I have a poem. Okay. So betrayal. I'm going to say 1.55 a.m. <laughs> and I'm going to change this. I don't even know if that's really allowed, but I'm going to. To say Alice, Alice works, problems, her father, office paperwork. Alice works, and then I'm going to keep, I'm going to cross out problems, and then I'm going to keep her, her father, is in the office. Get it? Metaphorically, he's there with me. Finishing paperwork. Now I can even add more, like, before break. Meaning, it's 1.55 a.m. Sometimes I have to work that late to get my stuff done, and I'm tired. And I don't get to take a break until my work is done. Alice works, period. Her father 
is in the office finishing paperwork before break. We can say the break. Stranger and her desk. No speak, no move. Hearing voice someone hiding he the office door closes firmly behind desperate and that is how you do blackout poetry if i was going to keep going then i would start just blacking everything else out to make a picture which I will also show you some examples of that. This is not the best blackout poetry. In fact, this is the first blackout poetry I've ever done. I mean, I've seen it because I'm an English teacher, and of course I've seen it, but I've never actually attempted it, and it's harder than I thought it was going to be. That's probably why it's bad. I'm assuming I would get better at this if I kept working at it or if I took more time. Okay. but So then you just use your pen, and I will be giving you guys Sharpies, which is going to be fun. And you black everything out. That's why it's called blackout poetry. And then you just have the stuff that stays. See? There you have it. And this is already a long video. 11 minutes. I uh, hope we play it on double speed. Bye.